What's up, you guys? Welcome back to the channel. UFC 295 is happening this Saturday, and I can't wait for that main event. So today, we're going to see if UFC fighter Alex Pereira is the best striker in the UFC. Let's get into the video, baby. What up, everybody? Everybody. What's up, everybody? Everybody. Before we get into the video, a quick word from this video sponsor, DraftKings. UFC is gearing up for an action-packed card this weekend in New York City. We have Pereira versus Prohaska for the light heavyweight title. Let me know your picks in the comments below, and you can also enter those picks with my partners over at DraftKings Sportsbook. Right now, new customers who sign up using my promo code WONDERBOY and bet just $5 on any of this weekend's matchups will receive $200 in bonus bets instantly. That's right, new customers instantly receive $200 in bonus bets when they bet just $5 on any of this weekend's fights. Stay in on all the action and use your $200 in bonus bets on DraftKings Same Fight Parlays for a shot at an even bigger payout. Combine multiple bets together from the same fight, including number of rounds and method of victory. DraftKings is the only place where you can bet Same Fight Parlays. If sports betting is not yet available in your state, don't worry. You can still join in on all the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy. DraftKings is offering huge UFC contests this weekend with massive cash prizes up for grabs. UFC 295 is going to be fire. We have the light heavyweight title on the line with Pereira versus Prohaska. Both of these guys have the best knockout highlight reels out there, so you know it's going to be fire. Get in on all the action this weekend by downloading the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. That's promo code WONDERBOY, only at DraftKings. Let's go. Alex Pereira jumped on the UFC scene and was crushing everybody. I mean, this guy was the only guy to beat Izzy Adesanya, not once, but three times. So some people consider him to be one of the best strikers in the UFC, besides yours truly. <laughs> so we're gonna be breaking down Alex Pereira's striking ability. And how do we do that? By looking at a few things. Number one, footwork timing, variety of technique, and of course, distance management. So we're gonna start off with footwork, baby. So a few things I like to look at when it comes to footwork. His ability to move forward, ability to move backward, his side to side movement, his ability to switch sides as well. Now, when it comes to Alex Pereira's footwork ability, he's fairly basic when it comes to that, which I think makes him so good. He predominantly keeps his left side forward, which is, you know, he's got a mean left hook in his power hand, his right hand, but most of the time, he's a very, aggressive fighter, so he likes to walk downhill. He likes to come forward. He likes to impose his big body, his tall features, his long reach against his opponent. Now, for a 185er at one point, he was huge. Obviously, he's moving up to 205 to face off against those guys, but even then, he's still a very big opponent, so he uses his reach, his size, against his opponent. So, predominantly, his movement is forward. Now, if he's got a guy who's an aggressive back or a very high technical fighter, such as Izzy Adesanya and some of these other guys, he will kind of back up a little bit, but he doesn't do very well back on his heels. He's at his best when he's walking you down, trying to get you to the fence, or he's going to smoke you and knock you out with a left hook like he did Sean Strickland. Now, his ability to move side to side, he will circle out occasionally. For instance, when he's close to the cage, he'll circle out. Or if he's against a very aggressive guy, he'll circle out. But other than that, his footwork is fairly basic. So, so basically, he's gonna walk you down and he's gonna put you to sleep. So his footwork, uh, I would say a C plus. Not very good and not too bad, kind of in the middle. Next up, timing. Now, what am I talking about when I'm talking about timing? Well, the ability to be able to see a partner's mistake and be able to capitalize off that mistake. Or when your opponent throws a strike and you counter over top of that strike with your own landing a technique. Every time you throw a technique, you're open somewhere. So to be able to have the timing to be able to wait for you to throw your technique and me throw at the same time, putting you to sleep. Now, Alex Pereira's timing is obviously phenomenal. He wouldn't be where he's at if he didn't have good timing. For instance, when he fought Izzy Adesanya, you know, the first time in the UFC, using his size, his pressure to overwhelm Izzy Adesanya, get him up against the fence, and of course, capitalize on top of that. He waited for Izzy to start throwing strikes, and of course, using his size and his aggressiveness to be able to throw that left hook, putting Izzy to sleep. He's not the type of guy to try to counter strike you, but he uses his size and his pressure 
there to get you to throw and he relies on his tough chin to be able to take shots if he does get a hit to weather the storm and wait for you to throw your volley of techniques and him throw his power strikes over top of that. Cause he's a big, powerful guy and he uses his strength and his size against you. So he'll wait for you to throw your strikes and then throw his massive, heavy strikes over top of your strikes, obviously causing more damage. His timing is there and not as quite as efficient as Izzy Adesanya or some of these other counter strikers, but he does have good timing and counter strikes, you know, using his size and his aggressiveness. So I actually give his timing, I would say a B plus. You saw more of his timing, I think better timing, in his glory kickboxing days. Very good at his left hook and his right hand. He'd wait for his guys to throw his right hand, and of course, he'll use that check hook against you, putting you to sleep. You saw it against Sean Strickland. He would go to the body a lot, using his jab to the body a lot. Strickland would think body, 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 thinking that jab was gonna go to the body, but he comes over top and hits him with a left hook. Actually, I called it. Me and Sweet T were there, Cade side for that fight, and I called it. He's gonna fake to the body, come up hot with that left hook, putting Strickland to sleep, and he did. It was awesome. Next up, variety of technique. Now, what am I talking about? Variety. Well, the ability to throw techniques from awkward angles and the amount of techniques that you throw. What you got in your arsenal, man? You got the spin kick, the spin back kick, the flying knees, just anything you can think of. The variety of techniques. Well, when I think of Alex Pereira, I don't think of variety of techniques. All the techniques that he does, which is fairly basic, kind of Muay Thai Dutch kickboxing style. He is very good and has honed those techniques down so much that he is just at the top level of those techniques. The basic twos, the threes, the leg kicks. He doesn't switch sides a lot. He's just very good at what he does. His kicks are fairly basic. Loves to throw his back leg leg kicks, throws his body kicks. He loves to in close throw his knee strikes. But basically, it's just Dutch kickboxing Muay Thai style at the top level. He likes to stay out of range as well, keeping his opponent right at the end of his strikes and of course where are your strikes most powerful at the very end if you think about it like this whenever you're bench pressing right as soon as you start to lift that weight you struggle here in the beginning but it almost seems like at the very end last three or four inches it's like boop, it's super easy to lift that weight because you're at your most powerful at the very end and Alex Pereira is very good at keeping his opponent at the very end of his most powerful techniques which is his left hook in his right hand. Alex Pereira has like that one hitter quitter power that not a whole lot of people have you know what I'm saying kind of like that Mike Tyson type strength when it comes to his striking abilities. When Conor McGregor early on in his career everybody talked about his power and his strikes because he would touch people with his right hand or his left hand and just put people down. Alex Pereira has that all day long. So variety of technique, I wouldn't say it's out of this world, but I would give him a C plus on his variety of technique. Next up, distance management. The ability to be able to fight your opponent at long range, boxing range, and of course, close range. Being in that clinch, striking range. And I think this is where Alex Pereira excels tremendously because wherever range that he is at, he's got a variety of techniques from that range. Of course, his long range techniques, he's a very tall and very lanky guy. People have a very hard time getting inside of his long range strikes his leg kicks, his teeps, his straight lefts and rights and his left hooks. When a guy pressures him, he'll back up just enough to where he's so tuned into his opponent, he doesn't allow his opponent. So if you were here, this is me, this is you. If I allow you to move in and I'm not aware of you moving in, you're able to throw your strikes. Well, I gotta be so honed in to your movement. As soon as you move in, I almost have to anticipate that and move at the same time. If I allow you to move in and I don't react, you can put your hands on me. So as soon as you move forward, I gotta be so tuned in, I gotta move with you, keeping you in my striking range. So I gotta move as soon as you move. So he's very good at that. As soon as his opponent starts moving forward, he takes a half a step back, boom, smoke into your right hand or left hook. Now, boxing range. His boxing range is tremendous. This is where he excels the most, I believe. Right in his left hook range. And that's where he likes to be. And he's also very good at throwing a knee in there as well. He'll throw a one, two, three, boom, knee right behind it, dropping you 
you with that body shot, or at least disrupting your breathing. And that's the thing. It doesn't have to be super hard. As long as I'm disrupting your breathing, you're going to tire first. And that's one of the things that a lot of fighters out there don't keep in mind. And one of the reasons why they don't go to the body as much, because they don't realize this. As soon as I start touching up that body, it doesn't have to be hard, but as long as it's constant, you are going to fatigue faster, especially if you're not used to that kind of striking or pressure. So long range, very, very good. Boxing range, he lives there. And of course, close range. Like I said, it doesn't matter. With a guy like Alex Pereira, most people try to shoot in and take him down. So he defends using his weight, using his strength, keeping you standing up. And of course, where are you at when you're defending? Your close range and that clinching range. And he's very good at elbows, clinching up, throwing knees. He's so good and I guess has so much experience from doing glory kickboxing. He's very good at the long range, the boxing range, and of course, the close range. So I give that an A+. Plus. And I think that's where he excels the most. Number one, big guy, heavy, hits hard. He likes to walk his opponent down and whatever range he decides to keep you at, he crushes you there. What I think he is not good at is his defense. As you saw in the Izzy Adesanya fight, Pereira likes to keep his hands fairly low sometimes. And when he swings and misses, that's where a good counter striker can beat him, which Izzy Adesanya did. He throws his hands so hard that he swings and misses and has trouble bringing his hands back to his blocking area. Another thing that I found that Alex Pereira likes to do, he keeps his chin fairly high. So if your chin is fairly high, the first thing that most people hit is either your chin or your nose. And if you get smoked in the nose, it makes it very hard to breathe. What I would like to see out of Pereira more is keep his chin down just a little bit more. So the first thing that they hit is your forehead and not your nose. For instance, when I fought Vicente Luque, Vicente Luque, number one, has a big melon on him, but he kept his chin down. And every punch that I threw didn't hit him in the nose, didn't hit him in the chin, hit him right in his dome piece, which broke both of my hands. So this is a lot harder than this in your nose. So I'd like to see him tuck that chin a little bit lower than normal. So uh, Pereira, if you see this, tuck that chin, my man. Anyway, thank you guys for tuning in for this striking breakdown of Alex Pereira. He's very good at what he does, which is why he's at the top of the level, fighting for another title at 205. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, throw some likes down below, and of course, hit that notification bell so you guys know when that next upload will be. Peace.